Hi and welcome to the Science Fantasy Experience and to 2022. To start off the year, let's have a look back at the previous year with my top toys of 2021. So I have 10 or so toys and this isn't exactly a top 10. There'll be a top three for sure but I'm going to throw in some other awards along the way, such as honourable mention, a wild card, stuff like that. But first things first, rules, or guidelines, if you will. Any toy that I purchased, pre-ordered, got gifted, donated, is all eligible for this list doesn't have to be released in 2021, it could be modern, it could be vintage. And lastly, um, I have to have interacted with it. It has to have come out of its plastic prison or cardboard box. So yeah, a, a very basic set of rules. So, first up. The honourable mention. So I actually got these just after New Year's. So technically not in 2021 but I backed these very early on in the year when they when they were first revealed I was super excited about them and then backed them and pre-ordered them and they kind of they got a little bit delayed uh, and then they got trapped in customs so they were literally in this country in 2021 but they just didn't make it to my doorstep in time but the fact that I pre-ordered it way back when I kind of I think that's justification for including them as the honorable mention you know the thought was there to have them last year lots of other people got them before Christmas, so it, you know it, it's a toy that was of last year. The honourable mention goes to Ramen Toys, Eighties Commanders. Jake's up there somewhere, but I grabbed these these two because Ace is still in the box, and Max is right here. I had to give this the honourable mention for a few reasons. They were never going to rank high on the list because of a few kind of niggles and QC issues and they were up against what I think is one hell of an incredible year for toys last year. But I have to give them the mention because when I did the unboxing, I, I feel like I probably came across as not disappointed, but perhaps a little bit underwhelmed. I perhaps thought they were going to be something a bit different after backing it and following all the kind of pre-production and seeing it. Do you know what? It was kind of a an emotional roller coaster for it because I kept on seeing the prototypes and the sculpts and I definitely had kind of concerns but then I was just like I'm all in I love Centurions but now that I've had these a good few weeks I've not actually put them down I I really like these now I, I'm seeing past kind of the face sculpts because there was an announcement that they've done brand new head sculpts and new helmets and they're going to be available in this deco and wash so that's super exciting for another time obviously but yeah I've kind of I've tightened up the joints and as I said I've, I've not I've not put them down but I've got them into incredible poses Jake was the one that I was struggling with in terms of poses but all I had to do was put his bazooka on the back and it made him a hell of a lot better and because they have revealed 
that they are doing tune coloured ones, it's kind of solidified how much I like these more. The tune colours, from the images I've seen, um, they're, they fall a bit flat for me. Um, I much prefer the wash, the griminess, and you know, it's, it's a perfect fit for me that they're going to make their helmets available. Yeah, absolute honourable mention, and it kind of it doesn't end there. They've revealed that they're doing a hacker and Doc Terror, so yeah. QC issues for sure, they're not perfect toys at all. They weren't going to rank, so honourable mention, but thoroughly enjoyable. I'm, I'm so, so pleased, definitely worthy. Next up, we have the wild card. This was an incredibly tough choice to, to make or to whistle down. There was at least three or four different contenders because I picked up so many varied toy lines last year. This guy, the McFarlane Warhammer 40k Ultramarine, that almost made it. I'd, I'd say that was like definitely second in the running. The only reason that he doesn't make it in is just the articulation isn't there, which is uh, maybe it's a fault of the design of the armour. You know, there's, there's no getting around the changing the whole law of Space Marines. But yeah, it's limited by that, which is a real shame. Unavoidable, I think. But as I said, it's a real shame because McFarlane toys have incredible articulation. Looking back at Dyer the werewolf from Fortnite, that's got like 22 points of articulation and it's incredibly poseable. This guy looks fantastic, don't get me wrong, and it's very emotional piece for me, you know, with my attachment to Warhammer. So it works on other levels, but the wild card goes to King Sphinx from Hasbro's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Lightning Collection. What a revelation the Lightning Collection was to me last year. I had no idea how good these toys were. I don't know if they passed me by on reviews or just not really seeing them in their stores. The variety of figures available now is incredible across so many series of the Power Rangers. And because of Lockdown 3, 3.0, I ended up going back and watching Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the first couple of seasons. They're absolutely incredible. And then this just happened on a whim. I was in the toy store, I saw it and I was just like, wow. I love that episode with him and Goldar. So much so that I went out and bought Goldar, but he just absolutely stands apart from all of the others. He's beautifully sculpted and designed with really kind of intricate muscle work. The colours are beautiful across the turquoise and yellow and like even the delicate shading of his muscle tone. Perfect face sculpt for what you see on the screen. And then I think the revelation really comes with the blast effects. For the longest time I didn't like blast effects. I also don't think they work on every toy, but for some unknown reason they work for me in terms of Power Rangers. I dig this line. So much so that just the other day I grabbed me a Finster. It's not that I'm all in for loads of Power Ranger toys and it's not a rabbit hole. It's just I want to get a few more key, key characters for sure. If this guy had been released last year, I'm going to say he would have get that. So we'll see 
in six months time where he fits in in a top five or seven sure thing Brad no need to seven last year I grabbed a handful of Marvel Legends figures specifically along the theme of ultimate Spider-Man villains picking up my favorite villains hoping to try and get them in a kind of a comic book 80s 90s vibe to them and figured they could you know take a whole slot so which was my favorite pickup out of those lot hands down it was Doctor Doom technically from the Fantastic Four wave this is by far superior to a lot of the Spider-Man retro carded ones. Not necessarily my favourite, but this is by far the best in terms of toy. It looks like he jumped off the pages of a comic and close to kind of what you see on screen in terms of Spider-Man and his amazing friends and the 1990s Spider-Man in the animated series. The level of detail is incredible. Every time I look at it, I see something new. Just when I was kind of getting ready for prepping for the video, I was just like, grab Doom, grab Doom. He's by far the best. Because of the nature of his armour, it hides pin joints on his arms, which that's just pure design genius, but his sculpt is awesome. When I think of Doom, I think of that galvanised metal face. He's got incredible stature. He's a little bit bigger than some of the other figures like the Goblin and the Sandman, but he's just, he's absolutely immense. It came with a super cool a Toy Biz inspired card and he also came with a deluxe white thick cardboard box all for $17.99. That's nuts. For a Marvel Legend figure all that, a whole slew of accessories, blast effects, tombs, energy bolts, it's you know you know, an antiquated gun. He's fantastic. He's, he's one of the best Marvel Legends figures I have in my collection. It kind of was a tough choice because th there were so many released last year. All of them could have easily ranked high for sure. But the, I think the one that I've enjoyed the most, the one that I like looking at the most, is this guy. He would sit perfectly on a Fantastic Four shelf, that's for sure. That new wave that's just dropping, or even just in an obsessive, particular collecting way, an Ultimate Spider-Man villain shelf. Keeping along the same lines as Marvel Legends in terms of a favourite pickup, I grabbed a load of G.I. Joe Classified, very much cherry picked, but I did grab again a handful. And this, I thought Marvel Legends was a tough choice. This was even harder. There was so many incredible releases last year as well as picking up ones that were a little bit older. Whittling it down was at first really really hard but there was one that was in some ways always going to stand out from the rest and that is the convention exclusive Zartan. The original Zartan mould figure was good anyway 
and I have my own personal connection to that. But the convention exclusive just took it to a whole new level. It's the perfect rendition of his original toy. A whole bevy of accessories, different heads, three or four masks, a bow, his signature look with the added silver colours. Instead of the backpack, he's actually got his quiver with the clan logo of Snake Eyes added on there. You know, did he procure it from him? Who knows? But he changes colour. He goes blue. Just like the original toy. Maybe in some ways a deluxe set from a convention is going to win hands down because you just get so much more than a standard release. But my God, this guy, absolutely phenomenal. So good. It just... Some of the G.I. Joe classified figures have just taken inspiration from all the kind of things that make the characters good. So a little snippet of the Sumbo cartoon, a little bit of the G.I. Joe comic, a little bit of the Action Force comic, the original toy, the things that they do. And then they go and add a modernization, giving them, you know, slightly different weapons or improved body armor or just that extra kind of look into what in some ways the future of weapons and armor is going to look like in kind of 10 years. That was always the thing about G.I. Joe. It was the future of technology. But I, I just, it's, it's just one hell of an incredible figure. It's a, it's a standout piece. If it hadn't have been Zartan and it was just a normal standard release, it would have been this guy. That's for sure. When I think about Cobra, apart from like the major characters obviously, I think of the infantry, the troopers, and it epitomises them in every detail. Look at those eyes. Sinister. The Unexpected Pleasure Award? Well, that goes to these. Oh my God, who knew this would happen? What a mould, what decos. This is incredible. Who knew a concept drawing of an unreleased Generation 2 Seeker would ever come about. Not me. Incredible. So we have G2 Sandstorm from War for Cybertron. Generation Selects. It, what a deco. It's just absolutely incredible. Beautifully painted and it's just I think an incredible addition to the many seekers that are available to your collection. But it's it's G2 Ramjet all the way. I didn't have kind of any connection to Generation 2 at all. It passed me by as a, well, I think I was probably, when was G2, early 90s. I was probably too old for toys when G2 came. You're never too old for toys. I hate saying that. I guess that was just the way it is, the way that you grow up. Toys were kind of leaving my kind of agenda in the world. 
So G2 passed me by. And even as an adult, I never really gravitated to it in collecting, but when you see people's toy photography and you see how incredible a, a toy looks, I was, I was straight in. I was straight in for one of those. The cyan and the magenta look is ridiculous. The mold is so, so good. The, the pose is, you can just put this thing in, is ridiculous. It's been a joy, a pleasure, and so unexpected from them being released to me choosing to get them. The oh my gosh, they are still sealed award. So one of the guidelines was that I can't include anything that I haven't interacted with. So I've still got a ton of stuff still stuck in their plastic prisons for various reasons, either because I don't want to open them or I haven't found the time or I kind of want to do you know, a first thoughts and unboxing of them. So yeah, I'm cheekily setting up an award and that award goes to the NECA Defenders of the Earth. Yep, these are still sealed after all that time. And I'm now in that position where I kind of don't want to open them because I know they are fraught with danger in terms of stiff joints and paint like flaking off. So do I leave them pristine in their boxes? Because the boxes are great. They, you know, they have echoes of the original Gloob packaging. But I do think I'm going to open them. I'm going to wait though. I'm going to wait for Lothar and Mandrake. Once they are released, which I've not heard much about them releasing. You know, they were teased at the same time. But I'm definitely, for sure, opening Ming. All I hear is good, like, thoughts and reviews about Ming the Merciless because I want him to live on my 80s villain shelf alongside G1 Galvatron, Cobra Commander, and Hordak, Mumra, so I feel like I need a Ming to, to go there. But yeah, these are still sealed. But you won the award. So we are slowly creeping towards the top three. But before then, we have the top toy line of the year. Obviously, I've mentioned Marvel Legends and G.I. Joe Classified. And we've picked, you know, one of those for each of those toy lines. So what could be my top toy line of the year? Well, that would be Masters of the Universe Origins. What an absolute joy this toy line has been last year. It all started with Skeletor. He was the first one I picked up and I was blown away by how good he was. An incredible price point, tons of articulation, and the variety in the toy line is vast. Masters of the Universe is quite a beloved franchise for me. I love every iteration across, you know, original filmation, the New Adventures of He-Man, the early 2000s and Revelation, but it all comes down to the 1980s for me. And these have blended everything that I love about that era. And then obviously added modern technology to it with tons of articulation, ankle tilts, knee bends, They've sacrificed the swing punch to give articulation, but they've done 
fun things like giving him a filmation head, but faker, a toy head. They've give, finally given the ratty stud in all of Eternia his moustache, and it comes with fun sets. The land shark looks really cool, the sky sled. It's just an incredibly joyful toy line that you can do on a budget. Loads of these figures are $14.99. It's not going to stop there for me. I've seen that there is a Stratos, but done in pure comic book colours. I had Stratos as a kid, and he was, you know, grey and red, but this one I've done subtle blues and a lighter creamer colour. I never had a Scare Glow as a kid. I didn't even really know who Scare Glow was until a bit later, actually. He's a bit one for the collection, for sure. I always want glow-in-the-dark toys. That's something. Yeah, this is my toy line of the year. Just for its pure, unadulterated excitement, fun and enjoyment. Don't get me wrong, neck has been great. Some of the Hasbro toys have been incredible. But yeah, it's that one that, that's really We've done it as a whole. The top three then. So, in at number three, we have Transformers, War for Cybertron, Cyclonus. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Transformers, for me personally, are often so hit and miss. Whether it's QC, Kibble, lack of kind of fun or they just kind of are so way off the mark that they just become really you know just not toys to pick up and play with but this guy has everything in abundance the color is exactly the color I want for Cyclonus, we have incredible red light piping on the eyes. There is no plain kibble anywhere. Incredibly poseable. The fact that they engineered his arms to fit his gun so perfectly. That's the epitome of Cyclonus. That's who I see when you look at the screen. I see this guy. The choice of pearlescent plastic to offset against the purple is just a great addition. Perfectly tamped on insignia. Part of me is a little bit sad that they can't do this more. I understand that certain characters like Scourge or Trax have incredibly difficult moulds or alt modes to bring characters to life but this one it just it doesn't suffer with anything. The only reason it's not higher is that there is two more toys that are just a little bit better. <clears throat> Number two, that goes to Goliath from Gargoyles by NECA. This is by far the best action figure of last year. Oh, have I just given away what number one could be? Keep going. This thing is It always leaves me speechless. This thing is beyond incredible. It's so heavy. It doesn't even fit on the screen. Every time I get this out on the camera, I can never get it all on the screen. There we go. Malleable, 
tail, giant wingspan, incredible face sculpt, muscle tone that it just so sinew and the veins, the detail on his loincloth. It's so incredibly pointy and dangerous. <laughs> his claws, they're, they're the sharpest things ever and it comes with an extra head. It comes with his pepper, a book, you know, different hands. It's just, it's superior to anything that I got in terms of an action figure. It's probably one of the best toys and action figures I have in my collection. Even though it is so big and heavy, it's actually still fun to play with and pose. It also comes in this beautiful box, which is, the artwork is sublime. It's, it's not even like Disney-fied. It's just got that little kind of, in some ways like a lenticular shine to it. And you get just beautiful toy photography where you can see his angry face and how to pose without him so you can see the the pepper in his hand velcroed got a bit of a Art Deco, New York background. As a complete toy package and experience, it's incredible. What makes it incredible for me also is, in some ways it's rarity or it's scarcity, as they do not have the license to sell it in Europe and to have one and to be in the UK. It's just, it's just great, um, especially as a 1990s cartoon fan, especially a darker cartoon, to see something in toy form get such love and dedication to the character. That's what makes it number two. <clears throat> and to number one. If somebody told me a year ago that a GoBot was going to be the top toy of 2021, half of me would have laughed and the other half would have been incredibly excited. Well, here we are. My top toy and number one of 2021 is Action Toys Buggy Robo or Challenge of the GoBots Buggy Man. Yep, a GoBot makes it to number one. I have not put this guy down since day one. Every week, a couple of times a week, I have literally converted him backwards and forwards to his beach buggy mode. I've endlessly been posing him because he has just been so much fun. It's just... An incredible, awesome, joyous toy to have. He's heavy, he's got die cast. He looks roboty. He looks just like his original toy and he just looks like what he is on screen in the Revenge of Kronos, Challenge of the GoBots. His addition of a Ghetto Blaster boombox, if you will, which changes into a, you know, a bazooka or whatever you want. It's just an incredible toy to have. No kibble. All hidden in alt mode 
that's the joy of GoBots or Machine Robo is that they are completely hidden. That is my top toy of the year and it's unexpected but deserved I feel. And finally before I leave I couldn't not mention the G.I. Joe Dreadnought Thunder Machine. I chose not to put it in the list because it's, you know, it's been my White Whale, it's been, you know, my G.I. Joe Action Force Holy Grail. Whichever year I got it, if I ever got it, it would always have been number one. And I felt like I didn't want to take a, a slot away with something. So, personal, grandiose to me, but it definitely deserves the shout out to end. I've been Rudy Sassou. This has been the top toys of 2021. Best of luck to everyone for this forthcoming year. And I'll see you all again very soon.